Today we're going to take a look at a neat little feature. This is the 5th edition Warhammer 40k release poster that'll definitely bring back some memories. Spacky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Rob Bear here with another 40K Blast from the Past. Today, we're reaching back to, I want to say, 2007, 2008 for the release of 5th Edition 40K. And 5th Edition 40K was, I guess it was the last edition actually recognized by Games Workshop as being of a number and not Warhammer 40,000, the rules. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> because it actually says, you know, on all the artwork like you know there was there was they made a very big deal of this was this was v you know for five of course roman numeral roman numeral for five and we haven't seen that since then everything's just you know straight up generic very sterile warhammer 40k rules but it was a different time you know back in 2007 2008 you know games workshop was riding high off of a, a lot of different things and you know obviously they're making moves today and it's not even worth talking about but you know we're, we're not in the same place that's basically what i'm trying to say but one of the places we were at was kind of like um i guess you could call it the age of apocalypse like apocalypse would just come out in the summer of 2007 and it was such a big thing like it was like oh my god there you can play with all the stuff and it's just so much stuff everywhere and there was like templates and you can play with all these things and it's so easy everything just dies and i can play with all my big toys now and there's rules for everything and there's data sheets and so many rules coming out and there was all these deals like that summer of 2007 there was all these like huge apocalypse like box deals that are actually part of this release poster here that we're going to get to of course so first up um, you know, was the the gamers edition, which was this tin that you still see today. A lot of people have this tin. It's um, it was roughly the size of a rule book. It, it seemed like it would be bigger, but it wasn't. And it came with these acrylic, um, basically tokens that you could use to mark, you know, various things like pop smoke or you know running or whatever. A lot of a lot of the new mechanics that were introduced in seventh edition, and of course they took it back fresh to uh, green template style just for this. Um, then they are, you know, went back to the to the clear uh, style. And there was a collector's edition book with a little uh, wax seal right there, which was really neat. And you know, they always do a good job with these collector's edition. They're always, you know, the, the most nicest paper, the highest quality cardstock. It's like it's like reading of like a handcrafted tome almost, you know, with the the, the good inks and the, it's got all of the. Um, what is it the 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 gold foil trim around the edges and it's it's like holding almost like a piece of art it's like reading a piece of artwork you know that it's just it's just really neat uh, unfortunately these things are always more expensive and you know they only they have a shelf life when the rules change obviously not as cool anymore right but it's like I said, it's always cool. It's always cool to have and, and have it when you're when you're feeling that you're like, yo, Dark Angels is my army. I want the collector set. You know, that's your thing. And, and that's great. And I, I love picking that stuff up and I love seeing that enthusiasm. And I get very enthusiastic, of course, about Iron Warriors. But, you know, we don't Iron Warriors never get any love. So that's OK. <laughs> We're OK with that. A true Iron Wars fan knows what's up. Anyways, so um, getting to some of the limited edition stuff that came out. Uh, they were, you know, their, their own boxes. They were, you know, straight up like, you know, big, huge, ginormous boxes of various sizes from Battle Force to like, you know, the basically size of this half poster right here of just sprues. You know what I mean? Like the Tyranid Assault Brood, this was 180 bucks, but you got six warriors, which is basically two kids, you know, 16 Gene Stealers, two kids. 32 Gaunts, which back then was two two kits. Three Carnifexes, which obviously is three kits. So for 180 bucks, 
pretty good deal. Then you like they bundled these things really well. Like, same with the, the you know the new plastic cell suits, fire warriors, devilfish, hammerheads, and piranhas. And you'll notice that a lot of these names are going to start sounding familiar because some of the formations and stuff now in the current 40k were based off of these names, which these names and then were the data or the um what was it? They call them like data sheets or data faxes back then, I guess, uh, depending on which era you want to go with, for, you know, uh, Apocalypse, that they put these things out. They were in the Apocalypse book, and, and then they also had a specific name, which we still see today, them, you know, taking a formation and making a box set out of it, or, or vice versa, you know, kind of type thing. Like Space Marine Strike Force, you know, Armored Strike Force. We're still seeing that stuff today. Uh, Chaos Space Marine Renegade Strike Force, Necron Phalanx, which I guess is technically the Decurion, but still, Grad Tank Warhorse, you know, all of this stuff uh, was really neat, neat kind of, you know, neat to see right there. And then, of course, the price savings, very, very good. Five command squad, um, you got five or four tactical squads, two rhinos, a Vindicator, Whirlwind, Land Raider, kind of like a Partridge in a pair, pair Treat for 240 bucks. I haven't seen a deal like that in a while, you know. Uh, the Armored Strike Force was 410 and you got all this stuff. You got basically like a, a, a kind of like a demo company almost, like a 20 tax, four assault terminators, two rhinos, a razorback, five command squads, you know, two attack bikes, six space marine bikes, a Vindicator, Whirlwind, Land Raider, and Predator. Okay. <laughs> like that's an army right there. You know what I mean? So, like, all of these things were, were really cool and such a good deal. And people were like, just, you know, snapping these things up. And then you get down to here, you know, some more of the accessories, which we can kind of see here at the bottom like they had a citadel battle map that didn't last long you don't see those very much anymore it's templates were separate uh the moonscape crater kind of thing this was like almost their first foray in the sourcing stuff out of china the the details it's a little flat it's very similar to the bases they put out today the counter set and the los marker which actually produced uh, you know projected a little uh, targeting reticule almost so to speak and then on the back here like i said remember this was the age of apocalypse this is uh, this stuff was popping off these were all of the limited edition apocalypse formations that were that were kicking it off right and here you can see you know some of the crazy stuff and you kind of get an idea of the width and breadth of the offerings like imperial fist tank company 10 lehman rust tanks for 275 dollars i can tell you right now that's like half price <laughs> these tanks are like 50 dollars each these days right so like you can kind of appreciate these deals that were that were around back then and people were like I mean, the battle company for $450, that was easily $1,000 worth of stuff right there at the time. You know, and people were snapping these things up. You still, I mean, you don't even see this stuff today, give or take. But imagine if they did that, like, just this this fall, like, boom, Space Marine Battle Company, $450. How many would you buy? You know what I mean? Like, it's such a good deal. It's kind of silly not to almost, like, just to always have the stuff or trade it off. Or, you know, when you get a deal like that, I mean, whew. That's uh, that's some serious, serious meatballs right there. Chaos Annihilation Force was pretty good for 90 bucks. I mean, 15 Terminators. I mean, a box set of those is normally 50 bucks right there, right? Behemoth Brood was three Carn Effects for 90. I can tell you they're more than $30 each, right? <laughs> Sky Sweep Wing. Green, Orc Green Tide was another favorite of a lot of folks. 100, 100 Orc Boys for 175 don't even give me the war boss. I'm good. Just give me the 100 Orc Boys, right? Like, such good deals, right? And then even more stuff here. Spirit Host, the Assault Wave, which was uh, 20 Dire Avengers. Dire Avengers were better back then than they are now, of course. That would be cool to see with, um, with like, some jet bikes or something, maybe. Um, you know, three Eldar Warlocks. You know, two, three Orc Dread Knights, six Kelly Cans, Titan Hunters. You know, all sorts of cool stuff in here. And then it got to the actual... Um, Apocalypse boxes here, which were starting to run out by about this time, right? The two monolith box, the three basilisks for, for 90, th three Lehman Russes for 90. I mean, these deals, come on, they're really good. Uh, Wind Rider hosts nine LR jet bikes for 125 bucks. I mean, right now they're three for 41, but still, you got two Vipers and an Autark, which were pretty good. Um, that's a pretty good deal. Cloud Strike hosts three Falcons. You know, rapid insertion force nine nine battle suits and three stealth suits for 125. I think the battle suits right now go for like 25 bucks each, right? So, at the very least, you can kind of feel me on this. This was an awesome time to be part of the hobby because you needed to scoop up all this stuff to play Apocalypse and really get into it and you know play all those bigger games, get all the you know all of the the crazy um, 
templates and things and get all your gear and you know take it down to the store and duke it out for like eight to nine hours forge world actually couldn't keep up with demand for for their their resin like there was a severe backlog going into i want to say the spring of 2008 they had to make a lot of business decisions and nobody really knows i mean we can all suppose uh, you know and, and, and make stuff up and and at the end of the day we don't really know but all of a sudden you know after about six months they got back on track um with their production uh, and things like that and that's actually that was actually right around the time Games Workshop uh, decided to uh, I want to say move their facilities to Memphis all of their facilities to Memphis and do manufacturing out of there which they don't actually manufacture out of there anymore they manufacture they run a third shift in the UK and ship everything out from the UK so 10 years later that's uh, that's just, just random stuff I know. <laughs> uh, so here was the back of the poster, which for a lot of people, they thought, hey man, let's check out this artwork. Maybe there's new Necrons coming. There wasn't new Necrons coming actually. It took a while to get new Necrons, but this artwork was pretty dope on the back of the poster here. And just basically it was just showing, you know, a battle against uh, uh, some Necrons. Just some crazy, uh, crazy artwork to keep the, uh, keep the dream alive for a lot, keep the hobby dream alive for a lot of folks there. So this, was the fifth edition kind of uh, release poster for Warhammer 40k and I think it came out I want to say it came out in the uh, the fall of 2007 going into the holiday season of 2007 so uh, that's it for this one thanks for watching our 40k flashback deleted scenes bonus content and all the interviews and post game wrap up videos can be located in the hall of veterans on the longward.net visit the longward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. TheLongWord.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.